What's good, family? It's your man, Daryl II. I hope you're doing well. I wanted to drop this quick word. But before I do, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just pray that this message would just have your breath on it, Father. I pray that your presence, your anointing, um, your spirit would just be in this message and it would direct it to, uh, the message to the desired hearts that you desire for it to go to. In Jesus' name, amen. I just want to say you're an X factor. Uh, what do I mean by that? I mean, when you're walking in things of the Lord, oftentimes you are seen as a mystery but to other people because they don't fully understand you. You know, when you're flowing with the things of the Lord, flowing in the spirit, sometimes doing the things that God would have you to do is confounding to the natural mind. I alluded to this in a previous video where it says God uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and the weak things of the world to shame the strong. And that's not a way to cut down or minimize a person by saying you're foolish or this or that. But it's saying in the world's eyes, you're underestimated, you're devalued. And God will elevate you and use you in ways that they never thought could be possible. And it will completely baffle them. And so I just want to encourage you that in the hands of God, the master artisan, you are a work, you're his workmanship, you're a work of art, and he's using you to do amazing things. Uh, you know, it's so funny. I, I've alluded to this fight a few different times, but that last fight with Devin Haney and Ron Garcia, I just keep alluding to it because it's just impressive to me. It makes me laugh because um, a lot of people didn't see that coming. Some people may have, but I don't know if they saw it coming in that fashion. Ryan kind of came out of nowhere. He was laughed at in a number of ways because of a previous loss. And the reason I bring this up is because it was expected for Devin to win. I thought Devin would win. And now you hear all these excuses coming from Devin's camp, which is so funny to me, but I realize, you know what? Devin can't simply grasp the fact that he lost and he doesn't know how and can't make sense of it. And so, you know, sometimes God will bring someone out of nowhere, someone he's prepared on the backside of the mountain to do things that bring him glory and to completely bewilder um, those who always look at the world through their own conventional lens. It's a way of humility, actually, that he will bring on people. And so I encourage you that when God takes you places, don't underestimate yourself, don't devalue yourself, and don't look down upon yourself simply because others do. Because at the end of the day, God is there with you and he's going to use you to bring him glory and you're going to benefit from it as well. David went towards Goliath. He was a shepherd boy and yet deep down he was a warrior. He had a sling, like a slingshot, and God had prepared him in the fields to protect the, um, the goat, the sheep from the lions and the bears. And so when the time came for him to stand up for Israel, he didn't go out there the, the normal way with a sword and a shield. He went out there with a slingshot and with his mighty God, and he won. You're not alone. Your mighty God is with you. Go as he leads you and watch him confound the wise and use you to do great things. Now, you're going to be persecuted. You're going to be attacked. You're going to be at times belittled and people may not like you because they don't understand you and because you have the favor of God and they may not have that. But be of good cheer. That just means you're on the right track. Don't pay any mind to that. Focus on God and do what God is telling you to do and watch him do amazing things in your life. I got to go. But before I do, if there's anybody watching, if you don't have a personal relationship with God the Father, you only can have one if you have one with his son, Jesus Christ. This comes from a confession of faith and a belief in your heart that Jesus died. He came out from the dead and that he, um, he rose on the third day. And if you put your faith in him, his righteousness becomes your own and you are adopted in the family of God. You cannot see heaven and be adopted in God's family unless you have a relationship with the son, Jesus. He lived a perfect life, something we could not do. And he offered himself as a sacrifice for us. And our righteousness can't get us into heaven, but his righteousness can. By placing our faith in him, his righteousness becomes our own because he paid a price for our sins. And so if you want to know Jesus, and if you really believe that he died on the cross and came back from the dead, then just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. I believe you were brought back from the dead by the Father, and I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you did that, your name is in the book of life. You are a new creation. Get in a Bible-based church and watch God transform your life and get baptized with water because you got to be born again of water and spirit. And just know that God has not forgotten you. He's got you. And it's okay to be a foolish thing in the hand of God. Much love. Peace.